So I know I'm a little late to the party in talking about this, but it seems like the Pokemon company has been on a tear recently, and if I'll be honest, I think it's going a little overboard. I get protecting your IP, and any company has a right to do so, but I think that is being taken to an extreme level in this case, where the impacted content isn't even posing as a threat to said IP, and that they are nothing more than playful mods that use Pokemon. So for context, the first instance of this action comes from Noah J on March 19th, and it involves the Pokemon company striking down a Call of Duty Zombies Pokemon mod video that, and I kid you not when I say this, is seven years old. So, the first question I have is, why was it left untouched for seven years and only now, Pokemon Company, you choose to take it down? The next question is, what is the big deal anyways regarding mods? Do they impact sales? Does it negatively impact the reputation of Pokemon in any way, shape, and form? Like, I can understand maybe Pokemon doesn't want to be associated with anything to do with guns, and that right there is kind of sort of fair, but if that was the case, why wait seven whole years to take down a video out of nowhere here and now? That right there kind of doesn't make any sense. Why go out of your way to manually strike a seven-year-old video that hardly gets any views nowadays in comparison to when it was first uploaded seven years ago? It honestly just seems petty. This was in no way a competitor to the Pokemon brand, nor a replacement for Pokemon. I can understand if these mods were sold and profit was being made off of them in terms of the sales, but if they are free and just meant to be a whimsical fan project, I don't see what the big deal is here. It also kind of sets a concerning precedent as well in terms of Pokemon modded content, because what does that say about other mods using Pokemon, like Pixelmon as an example, or anything else that uses Pokemon as mods? Are they in danger too? I feel it's a pretty needless drama that doesn't need to be a thing. As I said, protecting your IP is one thing, and if your IP was negatively impacted, then that's one thing. You do you. But if not, then again, what's the big deal? There's a saying I'd like for you all to keep in mind. Just because you could, doesn't mean you should. And that quote there can be applied here in this situation. Another situation I'd like to touch base on involves Relic Castle being DMCA'd. It's not mentioned by whom, but seeing how it revolves around Pokemon fan projects, I think it would be fair to estimate that the Pokemon company was involved with this. For clarification, Relic Castle was the place that hosted Pokemon fan games. And these games were made from the premise of non-profit and ad-free. There was no profit made, no sales at all when it came to those contents, and presumably, the Pokemon company took it to that site which is just really a stinging blow against the fans of Pokemon games and those fan projects revolving around Pokemon. It begs the question, what else can happen here? It's honestly baffling that in the span of a week, we have a 7-year-old COD Zombies Pokemon mod video struck down and a non-profit Pokemon fan game site being DMCA'd. There's protecting your IP from an actual threat, and then there's just being overprotective and being petty for no actual reason. But anyways, fam, these right here are just my thoughts on the situation. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree with my takes? Either way, I'd love to hear back from you guys in the comments down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your time as well in viewing this video. Have yourself a damn good one, you beautiful people. Be kind to yourself and to others, and I'll see you guys next time.